We're back. This is Dave Vellante with Charlie Senate, and we're live at the MIT Media Lab. We're talking about cybersecurity today. There's a great conference going on, uh, an, an event really, a workshop, if you will, talking about the gap in governance uh, and how international relations hasn't been able to keep pace with the developments in, in cyberspace. Herb Lin is here. He is a chief scientist for computer science and telecommunications board at the National Research Council and National Academies. Herb, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming Glad on. Glad to be here. So tell us a little bit about your role uh, and then we'll get into some of the things that we're talking about off camera. Uh, my role at the academies? Yes, or, please. Um, I'm, I've been there for 20, more than 20 years. I write and do research and manage projects on uh, information technology and public policy. Uh, in recent years, I've done a lot of stuff in cybersecurity, various dimensions of cybersecurity. Uh, for example, uh, the, the role of offensive operations in cyberspace, the, the role of cyber, what cyber deterrence might mean, how you might prevent somebody from, uh, dissuade somebody from uh, attacking you in cyberspace. A lot of research on what, would, what it would take to create a more secure cyberspace. So, um, you said you've been following security more recently. Um, like how recently? Like how long have you been digging deep within, into security? Last well, decade? Or? Within the last decade, okay, that's right. Okay, so, that's so right. what have you seen as the big changes in the, in the last last decade? Let's see, let, last decade, that takes us to approximately 2004. Uh, probably the biggest change, of course, is the emphasis on, on security in the wake of 9-11, uh, that lots of people are concerned about uh, what the bad guys can do to us in, in, uh, in in every way, and cyberspace is one of them. Uh, there are a lot of people who are concerned, for example, about the ability of terrorists uh, and other bad people to uh, do things to the critical infrastructure of the United States. For example, they worry about being able to take down the electric grid. They worry about being able to take down the financial system, um, water and gas, th those sorts of things. Uh, that, that, that's what the concerns are. So normally when you think of security, you think of reactive, you think of defensive, um, you're going on the offensive, um, but you said to me off camera, well, they're related. What do well, you mean right. by that? Well, right, so um, there, there is a, uh, if you're in a fight uh, with somebody, there are a bunch of things you can do. You can try to block his punches, um, and you can also punch back. Uh, and uh, one of the things that uh, cybersecurity has traditionally worried about is how to block, and mostly the research effort has been on how to block, uh, how to block punches relatively little research uh, on how to punch, how to attack uh, in, uh, in, in cyberspace. Uh, for a variety of reasons, there have been uh, taboos about uh, doing that, some of them not they're good for good reason, uh, but there have been these taboos uh, about doing uh, officially recognized research uh, in that. But it is now a matter of public record that the United States is developing offensive capabilities uh, in, in cyberspace. Uh, to take the battle to the bad guys. Uh, now, take the battle doesn't mean destroying something necessarily. It mean, could mean spying on them or, or, or something like that. But in some cases, it could mean destroying some of his computers, some of his infrastructure, uh, some of his military systems, uh, and, and, and so on. Um, at least those are within the range of possibility, of, of possibility what the United States might be willing to do under some circumstances should circumstances call for it. So you're right. It was was perceived as taboo because it was seen as evil or, or un unethical. Was it was it solely 9/11 that flipped that switch, or were there technological advances? That no, I don't think so. The, that the uh, the the fact that you can uh, punch uh, in cyberspace uh, has been around for a long time. Uh, that that is, there have been viruses for you know since the early 90s, um, uh, and there was an internet incident in the late 80s. Uh, that showed some of the potential for taking the offense. Uh, now, in that in the, the 1990 no 1988 incident was an accident. Uh, the person who uh, let loose a worm onto the internet and sort of brought it to its knees pretty quickly uh, it was just an accident. He didn't he didn't mean to do that, uh, but he did have this bad effect. Uh, so there have been there's always been malware on on the internet. Uh, what's new, I think, in in recent years, by recent years, I mean since 1988, is that there's become an increasing realization that governments too could use these tools 
uh, to, do, to create mischief in cyberspace and to do damage in cyberspace uh, in ways that they hadn't been able to do it before, before cyberspace. So, so let's handicap the horses on the track. Like, who's the best at this? Obviously, the United States is really good at it, right? China's yeah, United good States. United States is, is widely regarded as having uh, among the best uh, skills in, in this. Uh, China is regarded as having some of the best skills. Uh, Russia also. Um, then after that, you can get into arguments about, uh, well, how good is Iran? How good is uh, uh, Israel, is Israel uh, on this? Um, other interesting questions are, if you think about organized crime, what are the capabilities of, of transnational criminal syndicates uh, that have cap that may have capabilities uh, to, to do bad things in cyberspace? And that's not very well understood either. But we do know that they are, I mean, if the Colombian drug cartel can have submarines and so on, who knows what their capabilities are in, in, in cyberspace? I think the answer is we don't know. Could, could I ask you a question about, so if, if there's a sort of global rules of engagement mm -hmm. that's being developed, much like a military protocol, mm -hmm. and, and, and an offensive is permissible under certain mm -hmm. criteria, can you lay out the land for us in terms of what that looks like from a corporate side, from a private individual side? In other words, if you have a company that decides it's going to go out and land a punch and it's going to be offensive, wouldn't you then get into a sort of a, a fist fight in the streets and vigilantism? Yes, and that is, that that is, yes, that is that what, you're, what you're asking is a, is a very deep and important question, and I think that nobody knows the answer to that. So here, here's the argument. Let me, you, you said it in a very telescoped way. Let me, ex, let me, let me expand what you, you said, I think. Um, if you say that uh, you can punch back to, to defend yourself mm -hmm. in cyberspace, conduct offensive operations to protect yourself, well, does that mean that the private sector, the, a company, has the right to do that? Right. Well, right now the answer is no, at least under U.S. law. Because they'd the be committing a crime that's right. That's, the that's, other guys. That's right. Two, that's right. two right. wrongs don't make that's, a right, that's, as we that's, say that's, in parenting. That, that's, <laughs> that's correct. That's correct. But now the answer is, is no, you can't do it. Should policy be changed? That's a very interesting question. It has many policy implications. So, for example, um, what are you allowed, if you're going to go after the other, what kind of, what kind of punch are you going to throw at him? Uh, are you allowed to go and destroy his servers? Are you allowed to t see his data and erase it that he, mm -hmm. that he took from you? Are you allowed to implant a beacon mm -hmm. there that broadcasts, that sends you an email saying, here's where I am? Right. Um, I've listed those in order of most severe to least severe. Okay. And so what are you allowed to do? Um, what confidence do you need to, know, to, to do that. If you're going to actually destroy, some, destroy somebody's hard disk or, in fact, cause his computer to catch fire or something like that, right. how confident are you that that's really the bad guy? How do you know? Right. So it and becomes like a right to self-defense issue, just like you would in any court of law with that, substantive that, threat there that, in order for correct. you to retaliate. But, but, right, but right now, the answer, is, the answer is no. There is, there is, that's illegal. Right. Okay? Right. So now here's another question for you. Um, why would you imagine wanting to do this? Well, if you're a private corporation acting in cyberspace right now, being under attack in cyberspace right, right. now, what happens is that you have two choices. You can put up the shields, shields up. You know, or more go than more lights defense, out on the guys right? who came in. No, Which, what you have is a choice. Well, what you have is a choice. The, the, legal, the, legal, the legal choice <laughs> is you either call the cops or you put shields up. What you can't do is you can't punch back. Yeah. Okay? Now, but the, the ability of law enforcement to help you out is very limited. Exactly. They've yeah. got lots. Because they've got lots and lots time. of requests. They've got lots and lots of requests, and very few people. Right. 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 And so maybe the private sector should be empowered, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like we have Brinks Guard. What do you think? Do you think the private sector should be? Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, and and then there's the question. You keep asking me the hard questions. We got to turn I, I it back I, on. I don't. I, sorry, I don't have the answers <laughs> to here. Okay. I, I know that these are questions that we're going to have to resolve as a nation. Mm -hmm. Okay. But do you put this under government regulation? Mm -hmm. Do you certify the, the the equivalent of the Briggs guards who are firing back in cyberspace? Right. And once you put them under regulation, does that imply that the government is doing it? Hmm. That's a very interesting. interesting question. I don't know the answer. Yeah, to that. So, so in, in right. trying to figure that out, um, there's been much discussion here today of a sense of urgency uh, around the need for better governance. So there have been even some statements, you know, uh, from the from the president of ICANN saying hey, this is not sustainable, the current model of governance. Do you, do you agree with that? And is this, these parameters of trying to define what is 
what is retaliatory strikes that are legal and not, that terrain, is that all to be reviewed by this new model of governance? I think those questions are all open for debate. Okay. Uh, and, and I don't know I don't know where they're going to come out. What he was saying was that what's not sustainable is the control of the U.S. government over the detailed operations of, of, of ICANN when it comes to certain issues. And do you agree with that assessment, that it's not sustainable? That's outside of, I haven't studied that, so the answer is I don't know. Okay. Uh, it, as, as a political analyst, uh, you know, following, I don't, my mm -hmm. opinion here is just as good as anybody else's here. Sure. I, I see that as, as, he's probably right, That's, that is my guess, in the long run that probably isn't sustainable because the rest of the world isn't going to trust us. Right. That's my guess, but okay. uh, you know, I, I could be wrong about that. And as an American citizen, I hope I'm wrong about that, but I don't know. So a corporation today doesn't, doesn't have a lot of options other than, like you say, going to a, a somewhat you know, ineffective you know, policing mechanism or break the law. But the question is, how, how illegal is it? In other words, well, the fine, you know, the, the fines are. If you're going to the, the, retaliate against China, well, maybe that's something we don't. Well, want that's to do. right. But that's that. Punch back against a smaller adversary. Criminal network. Right. That's 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 an interesting question, and I think nobody knows the answer to how, because because all of this is so taboo at this point, nobody knows. No, nobody knows what the policy implications are are, are going to be. So I think that, that this is all to be resolved. I mean, maybe the right answer in the end is suppress it all, that, that, that the private sector should not have, that the current regime is, or strengthen it, that the private sector should not have the right to, to self-defense. Maybe that's the right answer. But what I know is that we haven't had that debate. We talk a lot about, in the Cube, about whether it's the industrial internet, internet of things. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of headwinds uh, to making that happen, but you can see the day where you've got, you know, turbines connected and, right. and, 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 and Jets providing information. That's you know, right. The entire internet's going to be going to be connected. And again, we've studied this extensively, and engineers are are somewhat averse to, to, to having right. you know intelligence placed and connections placed inside of their devices. But it seems to be coming. When you think about the the impact on uh, offensive, you know, cyberspace is an offensive weapon. Um, it's orders of magnitude. That's you know, potential. That, that's it's right. Speaking. That's right. Have you studied the? Well, yes, you, yes, you and, that, that yes, you think about that. Yes, you yes, you think about that, and and it's really scary. So we're going to have a smart grid, okay, of electricity, and the smart grid is supposed to control your is supposed to control the amount of electricity use so that it turn lets you turn on your air conditioner and your freezer and so on at the right times when it's cheap to to, to do that. How oh, nice! Right. What hap <laughs> What happens when your neighbor who doesn't like you? has a smart kid who can hack into your freezer and, and, and reset the, the temperature. While you're on vacation. Right? Yeah. That's right. I mean, th th those, those kinds of questions. What happens when you have uh, a guy on an airplane uh, who accesses the onboard avionics of the airplane uh, because the entertainment network is connected to the onboard avionics uh, and starts hacking uh, the control systems uh, using his entertainment console? I, mean, I don't know what happens in, in that situation. Or for watchers of Homeland, what happens when a terrorist uh, hacks into the vice president's pacemaker? <laughs> That's you see that right. episode? Yeah. <laughs> well, what Ch Cheney is on record as saying, I didn't want the wireless capability right. because of exactly that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, okay, so, so what, are you, what are you working on now? Um, what, what are you tracking? What's exciting you? Um, what we're trying to do uh, at the academy right now is try to trying to, to stimulate a, a kind of dialogue between technical experts between the United States and China uh, on uh, internet sorry on on secure on cyber security issues. That is the the hope here is that uh, based on uh, a discussion of technical uh, issues, uh, we can find some common ground. With them. Now we'll, we'll never reach, reach common ground on them with them on whether it's okay to steal intellectual property or not. That's not the issue there. That's not the kind of problem that I think we can resolve. But we can, re, we can, for example, we can establish a common vocabulary. That would be a very interesting thing to to be able to do, and we'd like to be able to do that. Where where do you think you are there places that you know of where you won't be able to to find common ground technically because of what whether whether it's I mean you always see this in you know. Standards committees. You know, there's, there's philosophical. Oh, I want this protocol or that protocol because it's you know smarter, better, faster, whatever. Do you know even what you don't know, know yet in terms of? Well, those there are there are many there are many fundamental differences between the U.S. and China, for example. I mean, we have a we as a nation 
and I, I support this as because I'm an American. I, we're, you know, I support the First Amendment. This is a very good thing to have, and and, and so on. But I also have to recognize that the Chinese aren't as thrilled with but, First but Amendment sorts of but things. But specifically, technically, uh, are there are there points of disagreement that just don't look like they're reconcilable without without some kind of compromise, you know, on either side? What like I say, specifically technical debates. Um, I don't know the an I, I, I can't answer that. I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, uh, you, have, you don't have point. visibility on that at this not, point. Not, in time. not, not at this point. Do you expect point. those That's types right. of things to, to arise, or They're do you feel like that that the technologists can sort, of, can sort of get through that? I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing on you know standards bodies, IEEE, or you know name one, right? That that they can't agree on a standard, or it takes forever to agree on one. Do you expect similar types of, of problems to occur? Or, or do I wouldn't be surprised if they occur, uh, but I can't tell you what they are at this time. Yeah, yeah understood. Good. All right. Well, listen, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE, and, okay, uh, and good luck with your presentation okay, today. Okay, thanks. All right. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, thanks. right there, everybody. Okay, right. We'll be right back right. with our next guest. We're live. This is theCUBE. We're in Cambridge, Mass. We'll be right back.